Hello, my name is Brianna Hernandez and I am from Dallas, Texas. I'm studying elementary education with an emphasis in language arts. Today I will be talking to you guys about a man named John Brodus Watson. He was born January 9th, 1878, and he was born in a place called Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. John was named after a Baptist minister in hopes that he will eventually become a minister when he got older. His mom was very religious and wanted to make that a part of John's life. But John went to so many church camps that he became an atheist when he got a little older. When he was 13, John's father left him and his siblings, and the mother became very poor and decided to move. She wanted to better her children's lives, so they moved to a place called Greenville, South Carolina. While living in Greenville, John... Uh, encountered a lot of problems. He became a troublesome guy and got in trouble with the law a lot. So eventually he realized that he needed an education. He said, I know that I can never amount to anything in the educational world unless I have a better preparation at a real university. So at the age of 16, John attended Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina. He was able to attend the university because of his mother's connections. At the age of 21, John Watson graduated with a master's degree. He continued his education and attended the University of Chicago. He studied philosophy under John Dewey on the recommendation of his professor, Gordon Moore, from Furman University. John was highly influenced by all of the professors that helped him study behaviorism, and he became a well-known psychologist. Behaviorism people believe that free will is an illusion. They believe that human beings are shaped entirely by their environment. In 1901, John Watson married a woman named Mary Eccles. They met at the University of Chicago. John graduated in psychology, and after he graduated, he was asked to become a professor at Johns Hopkins University. While he was working there, John was asked to leave his position at the university because he was caught having an affair with one of his students. He later got a divorce from Mary, and he went on to marry Rosalie Rayner. He then retired after writing several books in 1946 at the age of 68. John B. Watson died in 1958 at the age of 80 in New York City, right after he received an award. John B. Watson was a very passionate man about behaviorism. He said that behaviorism is a theory of an animal and human learning that only focuses objectively observable behaviors and discounts mental activities. Many of his colleagues rejected him when he first came out with his book about behaviorism titled Psychology as the Behaviorist Views It. Watson did not give up and he continued to work to write books and teach about behaviorism. It took him another decade before his colleagues started to agree with his theories of behaviorism. He then came out with an article called Behaviorist Manifesto. In this article, he collected data by daily observ observation of several hundred infants from birth through the first 30 days of infancy and of a smaller number through the first years of childhood. From the data that he had gathered, he said, young children taken at random homes of both the poor and of the well-to-do do not make good subjects because their behavior was too complex. From what he gathered, he said that he needed babies from hospitals so that he could truly experiment with them. He experimented with a baby and found out that the baby would not be afraid of something unless you create a way for the baby to be afraid. After his experiments, people saw that one could really control the way that someone is. His method of learning is not very popular among many that teachers and these teachers choose to not teach that way. Though it is not very popular, he still contributed a lot to behaviorism. Behaviorism affects teaching and me today because it cannot be used with every child. Behaviorism focuses on rewarding or punishing a student depending on their behavior. If every child were taught with this method, it would not work. It would not work because every child is different in their own way. There are, there are children that have autism, antisocial behaviors, anxiety, and many more disorders that will prevent them to be taught by behaviorism. I feel that students will fear the teacher and never want to participate in class because they fear that they will do something wrong and be punished for it. Though it was fun to study this educational giant, I do not agree with his theory of behaviorism. This method of teaching teaches that you are able to be molded into whoever you want to, them, whoever you want the students to be. I believe that I should not 
that it should not be a method used to teach students because the students should not have to be molded into someone that they're not. I believe that they should be whoever they want to be. I believe that they are their own person and they are designed by God that way. John Watson was an educational giant that helped people and that people could look up to. Even if they do not agree with his method of teaching, he was a hard-working man. Anyone can apply his example in their lives and know that if they set their mind to do something, they can do it. John Watson was a man that did not give up on behaviorism and was able to experiment over and over until he got the results that he was looking for. He contributed majorly to the method of behaviorism and he will be a great influence to the people that decide to use that method in their teaching. He is a man that will be remembered for the changes that he made throughout his life. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.